clapping. This is DC Motors troubleshooting. Here we go. Hello, I'm the CNC repairman, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot a DC motor in and out of a machine. Older machines use DC amplifier cards and DC motors to run the servo axes. These motors are not as strong or reliable as AC motors, and around 1997 in these vintage machines, they switched to AC motors and amplifiers. Right here I have a rebuilt motor by CNC replacement parts with a new encoder. And over here is an old, worn out motor that does not measure good. How do you measure and how do you know if you have a bad motor? To start with, most people start getting amplifier overcurrent alarms, ground fault alarms, and alarms they cannot clear. If you continue running your machine in that way, it's very likely that you will blow an amplifier. So to measure a motor, there's a few things we can measure. We can measure the windings, but that doesn't tell us a whole lot. So I'm gonna measure the windings on this new motor here. So if I put my leads between them, I have two and a half ohms. Well, that's great. The motor isn't open, but that doesn't really tell me a whole lot about it. Let's measure the bad motor. Okay, it measures two ohms too. Well, that tells me a whole lot. Let's do a different type of measurement. Let's measure the motor windings to ground or to chassis of the motor. So I'll put my meter lead on one of the wires and then I'll put it on the ground screw of the motor. And with my little ohm meter here, it says it's an open. Now I could check the other lead too, but we know it's two ohms between them, so let's check it for kicks, but it will probably be the same. Two ohms between the leads and open to ground. Okay, so this is a good motor. Let's see what this one is over here. So between the leads, we know two ohms. That doesn't really tell us a whole lot. With my voltmeter, I'm gonna put it on one lead and I'm gonna go to ground. Hey, I got like 700, 800K to ground. That is not good. So let's check the other one. It'll probably be the same, but let's check it. Yeah, 800K to ground, no bueno. So what that means is I'm measuring through the windings, through the chassis of the motor. The armature, the rotor, the motor could be full of carbon dust from the brushes. So the next thing we need to check is to check these motors with a mager. If you're not familiar with a mager, a mager is basically an ohm meter, but it puts out high voltage. Sometimes they call it a high pot test, and you always do this with it disconnected from the amplifier. Now in the case of a machine, it's easier to check this reading from the electrical cabinet. So you'll go to the back, disconnect the motor leads, and then you'll check it. But when you're checking it, you're checking it through the cable. So if you have any type of bad reading, you have to then go all the way to the motor and disconnect the cable and check the motor and then check the cable because there could be a short in the cable to ground and you'll need to isolate it. So back to my high pot test or my mega test. I'm gonna check the good one and I'm gonna shove this in here and then I'm gonna hold this one here. See if I can do it. Okay, the mega test, like I said, puts out a high voltage, low current and it'll check to see if there's a high voltage short. So I've got it set at 250 volts. I hit the test button. This meter says it's wide open and megas usually tell you the voltage. So it was going to 268 volts. I'm gonna do a 500 volt high pot test. Motor is open and it reads 580 volts. I'm gonna do a thousand volt test. So I hit the test, thousand volts, three, four, seven, zero, high mega ohms to ground, super high. So this motor is not shorted to ground. Let's check the bad motor. We'll start at 250 volts. So I shove the lead in here, put one on the ground screw. Now we're gonna do 250. To begin with, it doesn't even build voltage. So my high pot meter says, hey, I can't even build voltage as a direct short. Let's see it again. It was like basically 70K to ground. Let's try it at 500 volts. 70K to ground. Instead of building up to 500, it only built up to 100. We'll try it again at 1,000. 70K to ground. This motor is shorted. Anything less than one meg to ground, you run the potential of blowing up your amplifier because the transistors cannot put out that much voltage through ground, through the resistance. So if you're measuring in your machine, in the back of the machine, and I'll show you that in a minute, if you measure anything bad with your ohm meter, you have to test it with a mega. 
If it measures bad with a megger from the cable, you have to separate the motor from the cable. You need to meg the cable and you need to meg the motor. You can run your machine at one meg to ground, but you might end up getting new motors and new amplifiers. So be careful. I'm standing here at the back of the machine and it is missing two amplifiers, but I want to show you how to check the resistance of the cable and the motor together. These wires here at the bottom are going to be the two wires going to your DC motor. Now I don't care about the resistance between the two. If it's open you have a problem, but it probably is low resistance between the two. What I care about is resistance on one to ground or something on the chassis. If it's anything less than one meg ohm to ground, you need to have a look at the cable, meg it or ohm it, and you need to have a look at the motor. So since you might not have a megger, let's just check with an ohm meter and see what one of these is to ground. This is the A, so there's no rotary table. Let's check the Z. So I'll stick that in there, and I've got my resistance set, and I'm going to measure. That's not good. That's two meg to ground with just an ohm meter. Let's check and see what Y is. So there's one. Now let's check what Y is. That is not good either. If you see any reading on your ohm meter, you've got to get a megger or separate it and try to figure it out. An ohm meter just puts out a little bit of voltage, but a megger will truly tell you what you're seeing. So I'll put this at 250 volts and we're going to check and see what our Z is to ground. So up on ground, if I hit test, yeah, it doesn't even build to 250 volts. Let's try it at 500. We're at like 2 meg to ground and it was only building to 300 volts. So that Z motor needs to be replaced. Now if I was checking the X, I would say let's check the X cable first because it's what drags. But likely it's since it's the Z, the Z motor needs to be rebuilt, the Y motor needs to be rebuilt, and we should check X. But this will give you an idea. You don't care about between them, you care about one to ground. If you see a problem with an ohm meter, you've got to mag it. Hope this helps you troubleshoot it, and if you need a motor or an amplifier or any help, please check out CNC replacement parts. Thanks for watching.